It's good to be with you. Um, I think uh, all of us are going to take a slightly different uh, approach to the uh, to the topic. Mine is more personal. Um, in the 1980s, we were hit with a recession. Uh, I had been ordained just a little over two years. I moved from a rural parish to downtown Toronto to a place called Stop 103, uh, working with a so very small ministry for transient men in the inner city. Uh, we would uh, see about 15 men a day. I began that ministry uh, and uh, very quickly began to realize that there were problems in society that I just really didn't understand. Even though I had come from a family where my mother had two jobs, uh, we needed to live with my grandfather who had a pension, and uh, we would be considered by many to have been a poor family. Uh, still, my understanding of society was very much built on the uh, middle class views of most Canadians. Um, when I became the director of this agency, I began to work with various groups in Toronto. And one of those groups, there was a woman whose name was Maria. And Maria was a, a mother with uh, three children. Uh, she had lived in poverty her whole life. She was born into poverty. And she, as she, as she got older, decided that she wanted to change her own life and the life of other people. She became a tremendous advocate in Toronto at that time during the recession. She was articulate, she was intelligent, and, uh, and we met in these various meetings that we had as we worked with the various levels of government. During that period of time, because I was the uh, director of an agency, what began to happen was uh, the media would come and ask me questions about what we were doing, how we were doing, why we were doing it, and, and I would respond to those things. And uh, over a period of time, I had a fair amount of media. And I remember one day coming into a meeting, and um, Maria was sitting there, and I could see she wasn't happy. And I didn't know exactly why, but as I went to take my chair, she said, well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Poverty. And I thought, okay, <laughs> well, we, we, we have a problem, but I wasn't totally clear what the problem was. Well, over a period of time, I began to understand that I didn't know anything about the causes of poverty. I didn't have a critique. I didn't understand politics. I didn't under understand why we have poverty in our own country. And Maria very quietly but firmly helped to lead me to some understandings about how society really works. And so it was that through that, I actually changed my life, my whole approach to what I believed in and where I wanted to go and, and my whole understanding of the kind of society that we need to have in Canada changed because of that one engagement with that woman. Tragically, tragically Maria died about a year after that. Uh, she had not taken care of herself health-wise through many years. Um, she had always provided for her family but did not provide for herself and she died very tragically. I have to say that uh, her death, uh, to me, was a great profound loss because it was through her agency and through her wisdom that I was able to begin to understand things in a new way. It is my absolute belief that in terms of social justice, unless we change ourselves first, we cannot even begin to change society. We are implicated in this society and we are complicit in so many ways. We need to begin to look at ourselves and our lives and this is one of the sharings that we need to do within our own communities as we lead people to a greater awareness of what it means to be members of the body of Christ and to bringing in God's reign. And so it is that we who are here today acknowledge that pain and that complicity but we are energized in the knowledge that there are individuals around us who have that wisdom, who can lead us to a new place and a new vision of what our society might be. Thank you.